Hi there. So this video is just going to be a very quick um, overview of the blending modes within QJS because I think it's a function that's often overlooked in terms of visualizing layers, but actually can have a big impact on helping you make an aesthetically appealing map, especially if you have a lot of layers stacking up and you need to combine them and try to display all of that information. Um, so I've just put together a map here that's got various layers. So if I turn everything off and start from the bottom, I've got an open street map base map. I've got a digital surface model um, derived from LiDAR that I'm displaying as a hillshade. I've got building outlines, which I have coloured by height. Um, and then I've got roads, which I've given some kind of fairly arbitrary styling to by road class and some point locations. So the first question is, how do we display all of these together effectively? And the typical way to do it would be using transparencies. So in the properties, we can set the LiDAR to say 60% transparency. Works pretty nicely. We can kind of see, uh, pick up the, the open street map data underneath. Uh, we could put the building heights on top of that. In this case, transparency is hidden down here in the, the layer render, rendering. So let's set opacity to say 50%. Fade the roads in a little bit using the same technique. Set them to 80 um, and place names. Again, you know, we want these to stand out, but maybe let's just fade them in very slightly. Set transparency to opacity to 90. So, you know, that's, that's not too bad. It's managed to combine our layers um, together. And we could play around, obviously, with those transparency values to get different effects and ones that we find more pleasing. But let's just have a look at using blending modes instead. So I'm going to turn off the transparency and then under the symbology tab I'm going to change my blending mode. So at the moment it's set to normal. So we have a whole range of blending modes and they each uh, combine the layers in different ways. So for our DSM let's try overlay. Okay that's a little bit light so if we want something that fades the DEM into the background, then actually overlay works quite nicely. We've still got all of the open street map data, that's kind of dominant, but we can also pick out the details of the, the housing and that works pretty nicely. Um, if we want to make the hillshade data a little bit more dominant, let's try and multiply. And there we go. So that's a little bit more like our transparency, but actually some of the particularly uh, where we have lighter areas, the open street map colours come through a bit more strongly. Um, and we can play around with all of those different different modes. For soft light, very much lightens. Hard light um, picks out the, the darker areas much more. So you can see we're getting a whole range of different effects here, which we'd never be able to achieve no matter how much we played around with the transparency settings. Uh, so I'm actually going to go with overlay for the moment and kind of fade it back into the background. Then let's turn our building heights back on. And again, I'm going to actually set the layer opacity back to 100% and instead use the blending modes, which in this case also fall under the, the layer rendering menu. Uh, so try and multiply. It's not too bad. Kind of darkens a little bit, but we can still pick up um, the buildings underneath. We can also see how the um, building data is much less detailed than the, um, the LiDAR data. We're kind of grouping together bunches of buildings. Um, so we can try multiply. Again, what if we try lighten? Oh, I quite like that. 
So that's much more subtle effect, but with a bit of looking we can still kind of pick out where we've got darker reds and lighter reds. Screen, that kind of filters it even more to just the, the buildings effectively, is the kind of result. Dodge, doesn't really work. Addition. You know, so it's just we can play around with these different modes. Um, darken, so that really makes the building height stand out, but we can still pick out the, the LiDAR data underneath. Um, let's try and multiply. Darkens it a little bit more. Burn really picks out the, the darker colours. Some interesting results if we start to do distant difference, changing the colours. Um, so, what worked best? So, they're not all perfect. Uh, ooh, let's try. Let's try burn. And what if we also make it slightly transparent? So we fade some of those out. You know, what's good about burn is it's particularly highlighting the bigger buildings. So if that's our um, feature of interest, you know, we want to look at identify the buildings that are higher, then actually this is doing a reasonable job of it. And then again, exactly the same with roads. Go down to layer rendering. And let's just go with overlay. So, okay, that's lost our new road colours somewhat, so we probably want something that's a little bit more prominent. Multiply. That works quite well, because actually the colours of the roads that I've added come out quite clearly, but actually the road names um, still come through pretty clearly on, on top of those. And then our place names, you know, they're points. We probably don't need to do quite so much, but why not? So let's have a play around. Um, let's try overlay again. No, that loses them a bit too much. Get back to multiply. Multiply is a quite a good general purpose option. Um, actually manages to combine the two together quite effectively. So we can now see our points, but we're also being able to pick out the features that are below them. So there we go, have a play around. Um, it's really just a useful feature, as I said, that I think often gets overlooked and can actually give some much nicer results uh, with a bit of experimentation than simply setting transparency values for your different layers. Um, if you found that useful, please remember to like and subscribe and keep an eye open for future videos.